What's happening my fellow geeks and geekettes? Welcome to a brand new episode of Cosplay Chris and today marks part two in my series of videos on my 3D printed Batfleck utility belt. Now in part one, I showed you guys the raw prints from Cassius Props. Well today, I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to make box silicone molds of each of the pieces so we can then prime them, prep them, remold them again for final casting. Now as you can see here, I've gone ahead and glued all the printed pieces down on some white MDF board. You want something that's smooth, I'm gonna make that mold nice and clean. Now I just stuck these down with simple Loctite, nothing fancy. Once you let that glue cure, it's time to make the actual surrounding box molds so we can fill it with silicon. Now to make the actual box molds, all you need is some hobby balsa wood and to cut it, just a simple Stanley knife and a ruler to make those edges nice and smooth. Once all the pieces have been measured and cut out to make the box mold, you're gonna glue them together with a hot glue gun. The substance used in the hot glue sticks is perfect. It's not gonna inhibit the curing time of the silicon or not even make the silicon cure at all. Whereas Loctite can sometimes have an effect on the cure time or even the cure overall of the silicon. Oh, and I must mention for legal reasons, using a Stanley knife, please, for the love of God, be careful. This thing will slice through your skin like there's no tomorrow. Now, when you're cutting up your balsa wood, you can also use some off cuts of your white MDF as a base layer, so you're not gonna risk cutting any of your surfaces. Okay, now that all five box molds have been glued together and glued in place on the MDF, it's time to make the actual silicon molds themselves. Now the silicon I'm gonna be using is Pinky Sill. It's fast curing, it's reliable, it's easy mixing. It's 100 to 100 mixed by volume or weight, so it is so simple to use. Now I'm gonna be measuring out by weight, so I do have the scales here. And of course, use gloves and wear some shitty clothing, even though I'm wearing my good taco shirt, because if you get silicon on your clothes, it is not gonna come off. And also mixing by weight reduces the use of plastic cups because you don't have to use two cups at the same time, pour one in and then you have to turf the other one. You can just use one, measure it out in equal parts. Now of course once you've mixed the silicon up, we're just going to pour it in each of the molds. We're probably going to have to do a couple of batches because there is a lot to pour in here. Okay, all five mold boxes have been filled with pinky seal. I did have to do some overspill on the capsule mold box. Reason being is because the print itself was getting very close to the top of the actual mold box. So I just want to make sure I've got a little bit of extra silicon filling out the bottom part. Now it does say that the cure time is about 30 minutes to an hour, but I'm going to let it set for about four hours because these molds are quite thick. I don't want to inhibit the curing of the silicon at all when I go to demold. So now it's time to make some lunch, have a drink and just chill. All right, geeks, here's where we're at. Everything has been demolded, and I just want to reiterate that these are the first set of molds. 
We're about to make some castings and these castings are eventually going to be cleaned up so they're immaculate, they've got the proper detail that the screen use belt has and then we're going to repeat this process all over again by remoulding those parts that will then go on to the final castings for final belts, final kits, etc. So now, of course, it's time to actually do the casting process. And for that, we're gonna be using Supercast, part A, part B, exactly like Pinky Sill, its mix ratio is 100 to 100. This time by weight, uh, sometimes it's by weight and volume, but by weight, it's a lot more accurate and it's gonna cure perfectly. Now, I'm gonna be focusing on the main buckle here for the footage. Because it's the most open, um, I'm gonna be leaving the camera on this mold in particular. I don't really need to show you guys mixing this stuff up. You know how it goes, 100 to 100, mix it up, mix it up, plastic container. We've got um, some tongue depressors to mix it up in and of course wear gloves because if you get that stuff on your nails and your fingers and just anywhere in general, it can be like getting waxed, tearing it off. It's quite bad. Um, so like I said, I'm gonna be keeping the camera on the buckle mold because I wanna show you guys how Supercast reacts once it mixes. It's quite interesting to see on film, especially in HD. So make sure you got the HD setting on this video, guys. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start pouring in this mold first, leave the camera on this and show you guys what happens when it starts to finally gel. And of course, and then I'm gonna go on and do the rest of these molds. You don't need to see me, whoop, you don't need to see me do these molds. So it's pretty self-explanatory. Now, if you're wondering why I've got grams written on certain areas. This is for when I do the next round of molds for the final castings, so I know exactly how much silicon to mix each time so I don't waste it, because let's face it, silicon is damn expensive. So without further ado, let's start mixing this up and um, I'll show you guys what happens when it starts to gel. Also, one more thing before we get started, whenever you're casting pieces with molds like these, as soon as you pour your resin in, start tapping each side, whether it be with a tongue depressor, your fingers, or even a mallet, because that's gonna get any air bubbles that are on the bottom to rise to the surface, because the last thing we want is um, bubbles on the surface, so that just means more prep work. All right, geeks, all belt component pieces have been demolded. Now, I've come to the conclusion that I'm gonna leave the side clip for the buckle as is, so the mold that you saw me make for this will be the final mold for the actual final belt. There's no real cleanup required. I'm happy with how it looks as a casting, so as far as I'm concerned, that is done. Now, as we can see here, especially the buckle, there's a lot of patchwork required because of the seam here. This was printed in two separate pieces to prevent warping. And for that, we're just gonna be using Selly's Plastibond Bog, which is a two-part mixture, which includes a hard nut. <coughs> and we're just gonna be smoothing it over the seam here. And then we're just gonna be blending that in with some sandpaper. Say hello, Dad. That's my dad, everybody. And he's Fred Flintstone boxer shorts. Um, so we just got some sandpaper here. This is a higher grit, and then we go down to a finer grit, obviously. So we get a nice glass smooth finish for all the pieces. Now, comes to the actual pouch components. So we've got the pouch itself and the lid. I'm leaving the print lines along here as is. Reason being is because it gives that brushed effect as if it's brushed bronze, brushed copper, brushed brass, you name it. And the rest of the pouch I will be sanding smooth. So all here, the back, along the side, just on the sides here. And there you go, you can see the detail there. I'll be keeping those print lines as is. So once all the detailing work goes in, it'll look like it's brushed metal. And we've got the capsule here. So we've got some air bubbles here that just need a little bit of patchwork with this stuff, which is easy done. So it's gonna be a fiddly job, guys, but you know what, that's the fun of it, and I love every step of the process. It's going towards something that's gonna look epic. It's something that's gonna be practical. This is an actual working utility belt, you know? You'll be able to 
put stuff in here, you know, your business cards, if you've got a phone small enough, which I doubt it with today's phones, you could probably fit your phone in there, wallet, credit cards, cash, so, you know, I'm essentially creating a wallet. So anyway, let's cue epic prepping montage. And there we have it guys, the main pieces have been prepped, primed, sanded, you name it, and now they're ready for molding. Now, I know I said I wasn't gonna bother with remolding this because I was happy with it. I'm actually gonna be doing the same for the canister. As far as I'm concerned, these two are fine. They don't need any additional work, so I will be keeping the original molds for these for final castings. So now all that's left to do is remake the box molds for these three pieces and just remold them with silicon. And that's it, we're done. So thanks very much for watching, guys. If you had any questions or anything you're unsure of in regards to the molding process, the casting process, or even the prepping process, that's really a tongue twister, prepping process, drop a comment below and I'll try and get back to you as soon as possible. As always, thank you very much for your continuing support and watching and until next time geeks please always remember cosplayers do it best <laughs>